Hello everyone and welcome back to the continuation of this chapter Relational Algebra. In this video, we will be learning about the binary relational algebra operations that is the join operation and the division operation. First, let us learn about the join operation which is denoted by this symbol. Now, what does join operation do? It combines tuples or rows from two relations into a single relation based on a given join condition. You will understand this better with the help of examples. This operation is very important when we have more than one relation and we want data from more than one relation. This is the syntax of the join operation. When we want to join two relations, say relation R and relation S, we write the first relation followed by the join operator and the join condition in the subscript followed by the second relation name. Let us see an example. Here I've taken a relation department with department name, department number and manager SSN as its attributes. I've also taken another relation, relation employee with SSN, first name, last name and D number as its attributes. Now here, if I want to retrieve the details of the managers of each department, I have to combine each department tuple with the employee tuples and then check if their SSN values match. For this, I have to join two relations, the department relation and the employee relation by a join condition that is manager SSN is equal to SSN. And then I will get the details of the managers of each department. I can write it this way using the join operator. Here I'm joining the department relation and the employee relation based on a given join condition. This join operation is nothing but Cartesian product followed by the selection operation. That is instead of this join operation, I can specify the Cartesian product followed by the selection operation. Let us see how that works. So here I first do the Cartesian product of these two relations, the department relation and the employee relation. We have already seen in detail how the Cartesian product works in the lecture on set theory relational algebra operations. And the result of this Cartesian product is stored in the relation temp. From the result of the Cartesian product, we select only those tuples that satisfy this condition. That is manager SSN is equal to SSN and its result is stored in this relation. Therefore, a Cartesian product followed by the selection operation can be used instead of the join operator and it would give the same result. Hope you understood what join operation is. It combines related tuples from two relations into a single relation. Or in other words, it combines data from multiple relations so that related information can be presented or displayed in a single table or in a single relation. The only difference between a Cartesian product and the join operation is that in join, only combination of tuples that satisfy the join condition is displayed in the result. Whereas in the Cartesian product, all the combination of tuples from the two relations are specified in the result. There is no condition there. Let us see the result of the join operation and how it works. The first tuple from the department relation combines with every tuple from the employee relation. Similarly, the second tuple from the department relation combines with all the tuples from the employee relation. And then from these combined tuples, we select only those tuples where manager SSN is equal to SSN. This is the result of the join operation. Here the first tuple from the department relation combines with the first tuple from the employee relation and then the condition is checked if manager SSN is equal to SSN. Since it's not equal, that combined tuple will not be displayed in the result. Again the first tuple is combined with the second tuple of the employee relation and the condition is checked that is if manager SSN is equal to SSN. Since it is equal, that combined tuple will be displayed in the result. Similarly, the first tuple from the department relation is combined with the remaining tuples and the condition is checked. Since the manager SSN is not equal to SSN, those combined tuples will not be displayed. Similarly, the second tuple from the department relation is combined with all the tuples from the employee relation and then checks if the condition is satisfied, that is manager SSN is equal to SSN. 
We see that there is only one tuple that satisfies this condition and therefore that combined tuple is displayed in the result. Thus we get the details of the managers of each department. Hope you clearly understood how the join operation works. Moving on, the next topic we are going to learn is the theta join. We had seen earlier the syntax of the join operation where we had mentioned about the join operator followed by the join condition. Now that join condition is of the form ai theta bj where ai is an attribute of relation r and bj is an attribute from relation s and theta is any one of the comparison operators. It could be equal to, less than, less than equal to, greater than, greater than equal to or not equal to. So the syntax of the join operation using theta would be relation r followed by the join operator and then followed by the condition the subscript using theta followed by the second relation that is relation s. Let me take a very simple example to demonstrate the theta join. I'm taking a relation r with attributes a1 and a2 and another relation s with b1 as its attribute. On these two relations, I can do a join operation with different comparison operators like a2 is equal to b1, that is these two relations are joined by this condition or a2 less than b1 or a2 less than equal to b1, a2 greater than b1, a2 greater than equal to b1 and a2 not equal to b1. These are just examples of different comparison operators we can use on the attributes of both the relations. Let us take one of the comparison operators and see its result. Here I'm taking this join operation with this condition where theta is the greater than comparison operator. Let us see the result of this join operation and how it works. When I apply a join operation on these two relations R and S based on a condition that is A2 is greater than B1. First we combine the tuples and then check for this condition. So this would be the result of the combined tuples that is nothing but the Cartesian product. We know that each tuple from this first relation will combine with all the tuples from the second relation. So the first tuple from relation R will first combine with the first tuple from relation S, hence the first combined tuple. And then the first tuple from relation R combines with the second tuple from relation S and therefore the second combined tuple. Similarly, the second tuple from relation R combines with both the tuples from relation S and hence gives me the third and the fourth combined tuples. Then from this result, the given condition is checked. Since the condition is a2 greater than b1, those two attributes will be compared. When we compare them, we see that there is only one tuple where a2 is greater than b1. Since this tuple satisfies the given condition, the entire tuple will be displayed in the result. Therefore, this would be the result of the join operation using theta. And that is about the theta join. Theta join allows us to join or merge two relations based on the condition represented by theta. And theta join works for all the comparison operators. Next, we are going to look into few variations of join. The first is the equijoin operation. Most commonly, we use joins that has join condition with equality comparisons or that has comparison operator as equal to in the join condition. Those type of join operations where the only comparison operator used is equal to are called as equijoin. We have already seen this example previously where two relations department and employee are being joined by a join condition and the comparison operator represented by theta is only equal to in equijoin. Next is the natural join operation denoted by this symbol. Now we have seen in the equijoin, there is joining of two relations based on a given condition. Here it is manager SSN is equal to SSN. We have already seen the result of this query. In this result, we see that the values of manager SSN and SSN are same or they are identical in every tuple of this relation because of the equality join condition that we specified on these two attributes. That is, manager SSN should be equal to SSN. Since the values of both the attributes are same and therefore not necessary, 
A new operation called the natural join operation was created to get rid of this repetition or duplication when it comes to equijoin. Now in natural join, the two attributes by which we are joining two relations or in other words, the two join attributes must have the same name in both the relations we are trying to join. That is, natural join operation can be performed only if there is a common attribute in between the relations. Let us see an example. Here I am taking two relations. One is the project relation with project ID, project name and department number as its attributes and another relation department with department number and manager SSN as its attributes. Here I am joining these two relations project and department and the common attribute in these two relations is department number but their names are different in both the relations. To apply natural join on these two relations, we have to first rename the common attribute so that they have the same name. Here I'm renaming the dnumber of the department relation to dnum to match with the name of the department number of the project relation. So this is how I apply natural join on these two relations where relation project is followed by a natural join operator followed by the rename operation with the name of the new attributes in its subscript and then followed by the second relation name that is the department relation. We have already learned about the rename operator in the lecture on unary relational operations. This same query can be written in a series of steps by creating an intermediate table. Let us see how we can do that. We know that natural join can be applied only when the common attribute or the join attributes have the same name. So first we rename the department number of the department relation to dnum and its result is stored in an intermediate relation. Then I join the project relation and this intermediate relation and its result I store it in another relation. Now if the common attributes of both the relations have the same name, then we directly apply the natural join. We don't have to rename the attributes. Now let us see the result of this natural join operation. So this would be the result of natural join. Here dnum is called the join attribute. We see in this resulting relation, each project is combined with its controlling department. Natural join does not use any comparison operator and also it does not concatenate the way a Cartesian product does. Natural join must have at least one common attribute between the two relations and then it displays the result where the values of the common attributes are the same. Here this value matches with this value, therefore that tuple from both the relations will be displayed. Similarly, this value matches with this value, hence a combination of those matched tuples will be displayed and so on. Hope you have understood the natural join operation. It is basically an equi join followed by the removal of unnecessary attributes. Next, we are going to learn about the division operation denoted by this symbol. Let us try to understand this operation with the help of a very simple example. Here I want to retrieve the employee ID of the employees working on all the projects. Here I am taking two relations. The first is the employee relation with employee ID or EID and project ID or PID as its attributes and the second relation is project with project ID or PID as its attribute. From these two relations, I want to retrieve the IDs of all the employees who work on all the projects. That is, employees who work on both PID1 and PID2. For that, I will be using the division operation. Please note that when we see this keyword all, we need to use the division operation. Other examples could be students enrolled in all the courses or persons having bank account in all the banks and so on. So whenever we encounter the keyword all, we would use the division operation. So this is how we can write the query using the division operator. Let us see what would be the result of this query. As I have already mentioned, we need to retrieve the EID or the employee ID of the employees working on all the projects that is PID1 and PID2. From this relation employee, we see that employee with employee ID 1001 works on only one project that is PID1. 
Whereas employee with employee ID 1003 works on only one project that is PID 2. Whereas the employee with employee ID 1002 works on both the projects PID 1 and PID 2. Therefore, the only employee that works on all the projects is employee with employee ID 1002. Hence, this is the result of the division operation. Now, let us see this query in a series of steps using projection operator, cross product and minus operation. For better understanding, I am considering this employee relation as relation R and project relation as relation S. Also, I am taking the attribute EID of the employee relation as X and PID as Y. Now, let us see the series of steps. Here, the first step is to project the X attribute from relation R and store the result in T1. We know that the X attribute from relation R is EID. So, all the tuples will be displayed in relation T1. We know that in projection operation, duplicate tuples will not be displayed. Moving on to the next step, first we need to do the cross product of relation D1 and relation S. So, this would be a result of the cross product of these two relations T1 and S. We have already learned how cross product works. For a quick recap, each tuple from relation T1 combines with all the tuples from relation S. So, the first tuple from relation T1 combines with all the tuples from relation S and hence we get the first two tuples in the result. Similarly, the second tuple from relation T1 combines with all the tuples from relation S to get the third and the fourth combined tuple in the relation and so on. Next, from the result of the Cartesian product, we minus relation R. So, the result would be tuples that are present only in this relation but not in relation R. That is, the first tuple in this relation is also present in R. Therefore, that tuple will not be displayed. Now, the second tuple is present only in this relation and it is not present in R. Therefore, this tuple will be displayed in the result. Next, the third tuple is also present in relation R. Therefore, this tuple will not be displayed. Also, the fourth tuple is also present in relation R. Therefore, that tuple will also not be displayed. The fifth tuple is present only in this relation and not in R. Therefore, this tuple will be displayed in the result. And the last tuple is also present in relation R. Therefore, this tuple will not be displayed. Therefore, this would be a result of T1 cross S minus R. Now, the next step is to project the X attribute or the EID attribute from this resulting relation. And the result of this will be stored in relation T2, that is 1001 and 1003. The next step is T1 minus T2 and its result is stored in this relation. So, the final resulting relation will contain tuples that are present only in relation T1 but not in relation T2. So, here we see the first tuple in T1 is also present in T2. Therefore, that tuple will not be displayed. The second tuple from relation T1 is not present in relation T2. Therefore, that tuple will be displayed. Similarly, the third tuple from relation T1 is also present in relation T2. Therefore, that tuple will not be displayed. So, your resulting relation will only contain this tuple, which is the employee ID of the employee who works on all the projects. This is the same result we get when we use the division operator. And that is all about the division operation. With this, we come to the end of this video. Hope you have understood the binary relational algebra operations that we discussed in this video. Thank you.